Hello, everyone. Hope everybody is doing well. So we're seeing a lot of these crazy, unusual events that's happening in around the Las Vegas economy. Really hard to believe that we are in this situation. Although you've got to understand that a lot of things in around the Las Vegas Valley have not been going into the right direction. Now here's some news that may be welcome. Palms Casino has been sold to San Manuel Tri for $650 million. Now, why am I pretty optimistic about this? Well, because obviously I'm sick and tired of five to six, seven different companies running much of the gaming activity across the Las Vegas Valley. I'd like to see more properties sold, broken up, all these different things. Personally, I had some decent hope for the Palms Hotel. Looks pretty nice on the inside. The buffet was pretty good, about $20. Service was certainly much, much better. And I'm really just fed up with all this oligarchy. Palms Casino, by the way, was the site of the Culinary Union strike, which I countered them. And San Manuel, I've been inside the casino near San Bernardino about several years ago when I used to live in Southern California. And their buffet was pretty decent. The casino was pretty nice inside. We have to really see what's going on, what's gonna take place. Do you think that they're gonna make a good decision? Is it gonna really come back well? You tell me. However, we're seeing a lot of new openings that's taken place or recently have taken place. Can this result in a jump start in the Las Vegas economy? Or is there a possibility that this hotel may not be so successful and they may eventually convert these into, who knows, condominiums, apartments, vertical farms, you name it. But I can tell you folks that a lot of things in the Las Vegas Valley are not looking pretty good. You look at the crowds, the types of thugs, all the bums in front of the casinos, the service has gone downhill, the deals are still not as great compared to what we had decades ago. And keep in mind, a lot of people are pointing out, oh, well, the economy is recovering. And they point out to rising prices. Well, one of the reasons for these rising prices is because of supply disruptions and bearish sediment of the US dollar. But if we're truly having a recovery, then why are they talking about more stimulants? Why don't they lift the rent and mortgage moratoriums? Why don't they stop the pandemic unemployment assistance? Why, more importantly, can they raise interest rates? Now, then again, I've mentioned this before, I do believe we're gonna have growing economic problems, but that doesn't mean I'm doom and gloom. I'm not forecasting a dollar collapse. I'm not forecasting gold to go to $5,000. I'll debunk those channels later on. But then again, cost of living is a concern. And the issue is that if they continue to go up, maybe people will just use them for necessities and not for leisure and entertainment. And speaking of all of this, these tough times, we're seeing that a lot of these ugly builds that are going past through, and I haven't read these bills, I could be wrong, but you can see here more regulations and mines. This one I was kind of neutral. They're talking about a public option. This one was really something that I'm concerned about. Discrimination against women, like as if we really don't have equal rights against women and minorities. Seriously, I'm pretty fishy about this. And by the way, let's just be honest. Like there's certainly a lot of double standards against men considering when you look at certain family courts, depending on the state and workplace quotas. Here's a really ugly one, and please do what you can to give your opinion and fight these bills. Address systematic racism. Like, seriously, what is racist? Why is it that Persians like me who are non-European, we don't underperform in many, many categories? How do you explain that? And how do you explain the fact that other non-Europeans can be biased among other races. And not to mention that other races had these differences in their civilization for thousands of years. They don't want to answer that. Look at this. And they're trying to bring all these multicultural thoughts into our education system. By the way, I'm planning to debate one of the 
people in the legislature among a similar bill. So wish me luck. And look at this. This bill wants to make it harder for people to discriminate against people with criminal records. Yeah, so that a felon could move next door and God knows what they will do to me. They probably don't like my opinions and they can, who knows, gun me down. Now here's some good news. They were talking about a corporate governance where you had all these company towns. I believe that idea has been shelved. They were talking about this blockchains idea and they had this conversation on Zoom three-way. And believe it or not, I don't know why does the media and all these people continue to promote this guy, Jeremy Aguero. He's been featured on a number of news stories, documentary films. Now keep in mind, he didn't predict the 2008 financial crisis very, very well. Is there a chance, should I debate him? I don't really know, you tell me. You can see, this is a page I follow a lot, networking in Vegas, they're talking about having capacity at 100%, all these different areas, and he's been exposing a lot of great things. The win, they're ex mandating all their employees to get vaccinated. Look at the crowds that come over, the escalator moves, and then once he gets out, it just stops working. It's kind of hard to believe. You can see how he gets blocked by many other individuals. You can see all these young people are very fearful about the COVID crisis, despite that their death rates are very, very low from this virus. And despite the fact that, well, they're more likely to get killed by violence and other causes than COVID-19, Look at this article right here. Young adults are more scared by COVID. Well, why do you think that is the case? I think because young folks are more likely to be going through our schooling university system. They're more likely to be gullible buying the orders of the media. They're less likely to think of themselves. It's hard to believe that this country really has a future, frankly, m much of the world, given the state of millennials. Look how they're being brainwashed. They're being used as Antifa and BLM thugs. And despite all of this recovery and all this false hope, pumped by these lending standards and mortgage rates, many developers are still having grand openings in these master plan areas. And as you can see, it's not just the prices are overpriced and not to mention a lot of signs showing a bubble. But these homes are really not in good quality. I've made a lot of videos about this. You're wasting your money. And not to mention the urban design of these areas are not very functional and are not efficient enough. The question is, why do people keep buying these homes? And the answer is simple. Indirectly, you have other states, particularly California, the people rush through in that comes from all of this equity that they can snatch up these properties. Now, then again, the main cause of price increases isn't outsiders, it's lack of supply. Now you tell me how long can this continue? Because I'm seeing mortgage rates go up and I am seeing bond yields increase. These are a lot, a lot of fishy signs. I can tell you that. Moving on to the next article, Speaking of true economic recovery, U.S. birth and fertility rates hit a record low of 2020, the CDC says. Now, despite the fact a lot of people were staying at home, people thought it would increase, it did not. And it fell a lot, lot lower, especially among millennial women. Now, this data can be kind of misleading. Keep in mind, though, that Yes, the levels are the lowest level since 1979, but unlike then, our demographics and immigration rates were certainly much different. So if you factor in these pregnant migrant women, if you factor in the fact that immigrants are probably more likely to have children, I believe the rate would have been much lower if you don't factor these into consideration. Now, keep in mind though, that birth rates are falling among all races. But, and again, is the economy and the COVID pandemic mainly to blame? I don't think so. 
What these media whores aren't really telling you is that we are experiencing a dating and relationship crisis. They're not telling you how the changes in our genders, males and especially females, when you look at the court system, when you look how there's very little benefits for marriages, for men long term, when you look at this whole dating climate with the apps, with the bar scene, with just sleeping with one person after another, when you look at how especially women have focused too much on careers and schooling, and they have reduced their qualities in taking care of a house and taking care of children, when you see how even men have turned into these emasculated soy boys or thugs increasingly, I've talked about this many times, very traditional men like me have become more scarce. As a result, we're seeing a decline in quality of genders and family. And this has a lot to do with it. So even if you didn't have the pandemic and if you didn't have this lousy economy, birth rates would still be falling. Here's another article. Increasingly, a lot of progressives are waking up to this whole corporate Democrat establishment. This could be some good signs. And I believe that really this whole cancel culture is really showing that many great progressive ideas going after large corporations, Wall Street, campaign finance reform, income inequality is being used to distract and divide the country from more important issues. And again, a lot of these elites are benefiting from the social justice crowd. I did a post about a while ago how Kyle Kalinske exposes how the CIA and the military industrial complex is using the woke culture to get elected. So as you know, many people on the left have woken up to the Democrat establishment, how much of a sellout they are. So what they do is they embrace identity politics, the single moms, the mass immigration to fulfill deficit. And the good news is, is that increasingly people are waking up to all these scams, to all of these lies. And believe it or not, it's only a matter of time where people will stand up, fight back. And the question is, how will people stand up? Will this be tense or will this be quite soft? Here's another article I just wanted to talk about before I go. New COVID cases, deaths remain well above the national average. Basically what we're doing is we're shutting all the co companies and businesses down. We're masking up. We're having restrictions that are greater than the national average. But despite all that, the numbers are not looking good. Now, the problem is the people who defend all these shutdowns and the people who are enforcing them, the sizzle acts, not to mention the murins who are benefiting a lot. They're going to tell you, well, it's because we have a high minority population. Oh, this is because of the previous administration. Oh, it's because of these people like me who are not following the orders too well. But I was told that masks were substantially going to decrease the chances of COVID-19. And I was told that these shutdowns really, really worked. But why aren't we seeing these results? Why are we seeing poorer than expected numbers? And why, because of all these negative reports, not to mention the fact that the restrictions are dying down in terms of capacity and all the vaccinations increasing, why aren't we seeing them remove the mask mandates? Why? What does this all tell you? Is this really about health and safety? Or is this really about control? Something is not looking really, really good. I think one of us should really just say no, and it should create a domino effect and expose all of this.